creativeyatra.com. During the last couple of months, as you know, Ahmedabad has been talking a lot about uh, Virasat or heritage, particularly after getting the tag. Sure. Uh, but whenever you know people talk about this subject, I am reminded of Umashankar Joshi's lines: "Desh to azad tha ta thay gayo, tyan shu karu." Similarly, I am prompted to ask cultural. टैग तो मरता मड़ी गई ते शू कर वेन वी सी कसूरबाई लालबाई आर्ट कलेक्शन हियर आई थिंक आई गेट द आंसर एज एन इंडिविजुअल आई न्यू अबाउट वॉट ही हेड बीन डूइंग बट पर्टिक्युलरली इन अ कॉन्क्रीट फॉर्म दिस कलेक्शन इज फेब्युलस आई डेट लुक एट इट अ वाइल अगो and the charm of it is that this has been done by someone who has a, a special sensibility for it it's not that mechanically because he had the wealth you know he created this collection he bought this collection and just put it there so he had that sensibility and uh, you have been into the lalbai family for quite long so you know more about uh, uh, kasturbai's uh, love for art where else did you find it reflected well if you are talking about dada ji kasturbai he was a natural uh, what in terms of architecture in terms of art he was a natural mm. even uh, an architect like louis kahn called him a natural architect right he was he had an eye for everything that is beautiful not only beautiful beautiful with the right utility he would never allow anything to be just simply beautiful and not have its mm. uh, you know uh, utility utilitarian angle he was a very practical That's man right. for that in fact just uh, about 2 3 months back i had gone to the institute of indology with dr bv doshi mm. and he was showing us i mean we are doing some repair work there and i told him that the staircase here is so easy to climb He is saying, "Do you know the history behind this staircase?" Ah, what was it? Kasturi Bai Lal Bai went to Har Kisan Das Hospital, and he had to climb six floors. And he says the staircase was so beautiful, so well designed that But I didn't feel any strain. Mm -hmm. So I want in this building the same staircase with a riser of only five and a half inches and a tread of only this much. So such a small thing also was very important to him. for you and me will never understand this because when we are young you can take a riser of 6 inches you can take a riser of 8 True. inches but as you grow older you will realize the beauty of a 6 inch riser or a 5 and a half inch riser You're right so for little things dada ji was and i lived i had the fortune of being with him for just a year but in that one year he was such a mine field of information and more than information his reaction to the world outside was so unique and so integral full of integrity that he was a truly great teacher and mm -hmm. then after that his son my father in law he also taught me a lot mm -hmm. a lot right. of uh, i mean looking after these institutes the value of what these institutes are they are not simply buildings they are not simply storehouses of something that is good and traditional but where how do they interact with people and how do they become useful to people that is really the reason why all these institutes That's have right. been put up so uh, love for art was a natural part of his life yes it was integral to it life was, definitely it's not that well uh, just for the sake of talking about it he talked of art right and he himself was a very simple man dada ji was exactly. never a collector very, very like he will never say ki this raja ravi varma is beautiful i'd like to buy it hmm. his whole perspective on collection was very different from normal collections his entire pur purpose of these things was preservation 
Mm-hmm. If you go go to see the in, uh, Lal Bhai Dalpat Bhai Institute of Indology came yes. about because Punya Vijay ji asked Dada ji to create a sanstha jema these manuscripts, these priceless manuscripts have a home. So that's how he g- got into that. Then True. Madhuri Desai left her cul- sculpture collection so the museum came about. The Tagore collection came and Tagore collection was most people out of India wanted it. But his nef- niece was married in the Tagore family. She said, Mama, we shouldn't let this go out of India. Mm-hmm. And that's how the Tagore collection came here. The aesthetic of this collection belonged to the Tagores because they personally had collected everything. Right. But the purpose to preserve it and to keep it within India was definitely mm-hmm. Dadaji's. So, Kasturba had the right eye for yes, the collection absolutely. and he brought it here. Absolutely. Good absolutely. that because of, that is uh, the that is Indaba's gain. Surely, right. surely. Because, as I think I hinted at it earlier, uh, when we talk about heritage, we talk about what is visible. Right. But then but this particular love for art also has to be preserved and spread. Yes, the integrity is, what is, is exactly. within. True. So, it is through the exposure the people get that uh, perhaps you know, the purpose is served. Uh, <clears throat> it's no use keeping, uh, let us say, because it's like the, like the, the, the musky smell of the perfume. Yes. Right. To play a pun on Kasturba's name. Right. Kasturi, right? Right. So, I think uh, it is a smell of that Kasturi smell that we get here. Invisible. Of course, as I, as I went around the, the, the museum, you know, uh, there as if, you know, that smell was permeating. So, that is not tangible, intangible, but that is what we need as a society. Um, perhaps, you know, you found it uh, reflected as well. For example, um, the Dilwara temples which were renovated, yes. you know. So there also, nature, of course, he was, he was prompted by religion, primarily perhaps, but also by the aesthetic sense you talk no, about. No, uh, let me tell you an incident of the Dilwara temples. When the Dilwara temples basically don't come under the trust that we all are managing, which our family is managing, which Ananji Kalyanji trust of which Dadaji was chairperson. Right. Dilwara temple doesn't come under that trust. But the people of Dilwara trust, gave this uh, renovation to Dadaji to because Dadaji. they believed that he had the right eye and ah, he had the right sensibility. Right. But whilst doing it, he said, I want a particular marble that has been used at Dilwara, only that marble I will get used. And at that time, the Raja of that area refused it. Mm-hmm. He's saying, I will not allow my minds to be further mined. So Dadaji said, then we have to wait. We cannot do this renovation without this particular marble. I see. Then he approached Vallabhai, we got our independence, all the stately uh, kingdoms were merged. After that he got permission for that mine, that particular marble to be mined and then the renovation oh, of the Dilwara. Oh, yes. he had He said that. we cannot because put a patchwork of other material when we have the original material available. Mm-hmm. So, I mean a small thing like this, he said we cannot do it. Ajeto, we, we just simply bring a electricity line running right across the temple without wondering, is this going to look okay or not? We have to bring electricity, but how best? We All we have to do is give it thought. Hmm. But Dadaji had it in him. You're right. All right. Uh, one observation comes to mind. <clears throat> when I look at your work, perhaps in detail we can talk about it later. Or even um, Pannabin's work in education. As far as the descendants of Kasturbai are concerned, perhaps you know they are almost exclusively devoted to business and industry, while it is given to the powerful women in the family who came into it later on. You know they took up the cause of uh, art. Your take on that? I think there is a little bit of uh, misinformation in that because mm-hmm. the majority of education institutes are managed by the men in our family. Uh-huh. If you see Amdad Education Society, my father-in-law was managing it. Of course, it started by Dadaji, then my father-in-law was this, now my husband is there. 
so many other members of our male members of our family are involved in many of the other institute we have this uh, rajiv helping us look after the indian uh, the institute of indology right we have some way looking after all our temples so the male members are in fact doing the larger things mummy oh. and myself are looking after the smaller ones oh <laughs> so uh, is that uh, is that um, modesty no it is, is not modesty it is uh, see uh, amdad education society is managing 14 schools whilst we are looking after one rachna and one moinaba <laughs> so if you really see even in terms of and if, why mummy was so involved with rachna she started the institute whilst moina ba was started by my father in law's grandmother it is now 112 years old that school it was started for jain girls way way back in 1912 i think mm-hmm. so all those institutions were looked by looked after by the male members of our family mummy then finally formed a school of her own to look after and then i took off, took over her mantle mm-hmm. and today my father in law gave opportunity to radhika bhabi to me to paulo me all of us we are now helping in fact look after some of the institutions that the family in general is looking after okay welcome <laughs> i accept it all heartedly uh, <clears throat> and uh, i talked about your work and also pandabin's work i think you know that uh, there used to be a lot of performing arts activity at rachna school in, yes, in those days yes it was it was the very purpose my mother in law felt education is not education unless True. you have a complete person who's exposed to all kinds of uh, areas of education not just paper and pencil hmm. and performing hmm. arts were her greatest uh, love that's true we had a whole section where she had specialist managing everything even today but uh, we are not able to keep up the tempo that she had she mm-hmm. used to have mm. two three things during the year we only have a yearly performance you had this interest in art and culture even before you got married otherwise you know perhaps you, know, you won't pursue the same no i i am afraid no in fact i knew nothing about art when i got married really? yes i came here Initially when I got married the collection was mainly in boxes very little was out in the house but lots of scholars would come in the winter months to have a look at it and my father in law secretary Bharat bhai used to look after it initially then Bharat bhai retired and went away and there was a void and we had visitors and my father in law needed help that is how i got into it oh. being caretaker of the collection but before that you had nothing to do with nothing, art culture nothing nothing my entire life education there's a total started, surprise yes my education started after i got married but that could have been in the genes or perhaps you know you <laughs> maybe uh, right. i don't know but i'm very fond of reading knowing increasing my area of knowledge so in the process when something like this something so wonderful is around you you can't help but getting involved with it mm <laughs> and i really have had no exposure in fact the lecture series we had last weekend was something which was very interesting for me because it introduced me to a completely different side of art so far art for me has been something that appealed to me and i bought mm-hmm. but now to understand what goes behind it how different artists see their works why they do something the way they do it was a very interesting and revealing uh, lecture mm-hmm, series mm-hmm. that we hosted last weekend right. but my background in art is almost zero personally for me that's uh, news <laughs> but it is true it is true um, you mentioned a couple of uh, things which are related to your pursuit of art and culture uh, but there must be some that there must be some other areas where also this uh, love for art is applied to what else do you do which is uh, connected with art and culture perhaps you have been doing a lot well i uh, in terms of my personal involvement i am very i used to paint as a young girl but that was just a hobby painting okay nothing very seriously pursued but i definitely love to do craft i am a very hands uh, a person involved with hands and anything new i see I love to do like a simple thing like gift wrapping. My family tells me, "Mummy, you're crazy. How can you spend one hour gifting a 
uh, a gift which people are going to tear and throw away. I said, I don't do it for that person. I do it for myself and I love to do it out of recycled things. How will I reuse that ribbon in a more creative manner and give it to someone? Right. So in that sense, I love doing those kind of things. But this has come to me because I'm a caretaker of it. And uh, as I, today uh, we had Gulam Muhammad Sheikh come here. When he was going around the museum, I hung on to every word he spoke. He's such a knowledgeable person. What he was saying about my painting was my education about my painting. He knew so much more than I ever knew. Mm -hmm. So every time an artist comes to visit, I make it a point that I will go around the museum with them so that I learn something out of them for my right, museum, for right. something that we own. Like a, a, a scholar from Oxford has come, he's going to study the Khamsa of Nizami. You must have seen that oh, yes. Persian manuscript in that cabinet. Uh -huh. Now. What he is going to tell me about that manuscript, I don't know. That would be a revelation. It will yes. be a revelation for us. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, your other major area of interest is education. Perhaps primarily it is uh, education. Yes. And uh, I recall you have said it somewhere that it is education which is the catalyst for social change. Absolutely. So, um, what do you do specially, particularly after Panaben, Panaben that uh, uh, helps you change even society, affect even society? See, for me, education doesn't mean going through school. My, my take on education is the refinement of a person. Mm -hmm. So, of course, numbers, reading and writing in a way helps with that. But only that cannot take you anywhere. You, the greater the refined refinement a person develops, the greater he is educated accordingly. Right. So our whole purpose in school is, yes, children need to go through degrees, children need to have percentages, because they are stepping stones to further education. But along with it, if we do not create a child who is aware of things around him, aware of his social uh, responsibility towards the society in which he lives, aware of the need to preserve what has been handed down to him. It may be art, it may be a simple thing like his environment. Mm -hmm. If we do not turn our uh, attention to that part of education, refinement of the complete child, it is a failure. I mean, how does it matter if I've got 95% in SSC when I'm least bothered about the person sitting next to me? If I'm not sensitive enough for my fellow human beings, if I'm not sensitive enough for the world in which I live in, the education is useless. And so we, we have changed the focus from just the three hours to, yes, we, to know and we have created a system in which each child is exposed to a laboratory in which his learning can be experimented with, the classroom in which the formal learning takes place, and a quiet time when he has to self-learn certain without the supervision of an adult. So each child goes through all three different ways of exposure for every subject he learns. Mm -hmm. So we've created these lab situations and self-work rooms. So we're changing the way we make children learn. And learning is not necessarily on paper, pencil or blackboard. Today, learning is in terms of speaking, presenting, working with people to make a project. So, today schools are very different from what they used to be. And I'm happy to say that we've constantly, we are ready to change and bring in a newer system of learning. Because all these learnings are more permanent than the paper and pencil method. Do you also teach in the class? So, some some subjects where I feel that I want to show that this is the way I would like something to do. Off late, I've not done much. But early on, I would just say that I'll take a letter, lesson on transport. I want teachers to know. We were at a phase where we were asking teachers to change the way they're teaching children. Mm -hmm. And as a demonstration, yes, I would. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I discuss more with teachers the way they should approach. Mm -hmm. But actually dealing with the classroom is not something I've done for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. 
uh, some dramatic activity still taking place at Ritima? Oh yes, every year. Every year we have. But like mummy used to make it a little more public, we keep it more uh, to within the school and the school body and the parent body. Uh, last evening it came to mind that both of your sons, yes. I think you have two yes, sons, right? both two of sons. your sons, one is Punit yes. and the other one is Kulin. Yes, uh, right. So they participated in plays produced by Father, Father Morondo yes. and they did very well. Yes, they did. My elder son was in a les uh, was in the, the lesson, lesson by UNESCO, uh, UNESCO's, UNESCO's uh, lesson. And my younger one was in the matchmaker also. Oh, done matchmaker. I didn't, I didn't recall yes, he was in the, the play. Both of them and both of them because of the way father taught them. They are so attached to Father Morondo. Even today they don't go to Europe without visiting him. Oh, they I will see. take a detour and go to Spain to see father. I see. Puneet has been four times, Kulin has been twice. Every time they go that way, they will include Spain in the itinerary. Father has left such a lasting impression on both the boys. No, that also is the, the, the impact of art on life. Yes, and you know, see, father also taught not in the conventional manner. He taught yes. in a very unconventional manner. It was so difficult sometimes for parents to understand, is this teaching? But that teaching was so permanent that you never forget it. I have preserved every paper that father drew out for my children. I've kept it with me because it was far, far ahead of his times. And people couldn't understand that, is this really teaching? But they didn't realize that that kind of teaching was incredible and so lasting that children would never forget it for the rest of their life. 